So today's session will be on the basics of CT brain. So CT brain was originally called the CAT scan of the brain. Was this why it was called so? Maybe let's have a look. The flow of the session will be the basics of what is a CT scan, a brief intro into the history and how it all came about, an introduction to Hounsfield units, what is it, a basic outline of the anatomy of the human brain as seen on a CT scan, a few pathologies to introduce, when to give contrast and when to order MRI, and a few clinical scenarios to get an idea of what the use of a CT scan of the brain is, and finally a few take-home points. It all started with this man, Godfrey Hounsfield, who gave us the invention that helped us to look inside the thick skull. All this happened 50 years ago when the first CT scan led doctors to see inside a living skull. But is that what he wanted to do? Not at all. All he wanted to do was look into the pyramids without opening them and to find out what objects were hidden in them. But finally, he ended up discovering the human brain without opening the skull. So he held on to this idea over the years, which can be paraphrased as looking inside a box without opening in it. And what he opened was actually the skull without cracking it. Is this how he went about it? Definitely not. Then what did he actually do? This is what he actually did. Let us take a look. And when he did that, was there a brain in? We will definitely know about it. So normally when a chest x-ray or any radiograph is taken, what is happening is we send rays from one side and collect the information from the other side and that's how a simple radiograph is taken. What Godfrey Hounsfield thought was, why not send these x-rays all around that particular part which is to be imaged and then collect the images that are obtained and integrate them to get a much more clearer three-dimensional information about the structure. And that is exactly what he did. What he did is he sent x-rays from all different directions around the head and collected the information from each direction and fed them on to a computer. And then the computer integrated all the information and gave us what we now routinely use as the CT scan images. This new approach revealed the previously unseen in a very beautiful way. This was the first CT scan of the brain taken and this took almost 15 minutes to get the single slice. And this is the tumor that is seen in the frontal lobe. So for this wonderful work, Hounsfield was awarded the Nobel Prize in the year 1979 and he was knighted in the year 1981. How does the scanner actually work? This is the source of the X-ray and these are a row of detectors. When the X-ray comes out of the source, it has to enter the detectors and both of them keep going around the patient until they complete one slice and then they slide down one level and then they undergo the same revolution around the patient once again to complete the entire area that has to be scanned. All this information is fed to the computer and like I said before, the computer gives us the final image. What happens is the CT can only go around this axial section and all other sagittal, coronal and different oblique sections can be obtained after post-processing within the computer. So when the X-ray passes through the body, it comes out depending on what is the density of the tissue it has gone through. For example, when the X-ray passes through a very dense tissue like the bone, what happens is the high intensity X-rays are all able to pass through the bone. As you can see here, this is an x-ray having intensity of very different variety of intensities from low to high, but that which passes the bone will only be the high intensity rays because the low intensity ones will be stopped by this high dense bone. So such a tissue which is of high density and stops all the low density rays but allows only the high density rays will be depicted as a bright area on the film. So. What do soft tissues like the lung, liver, what do they do? When the same x-rays of various intensities pass through these soft tissues like the lung, what happens is only the very low intensity rays are stopped and medium and high intensity rays pass through the soft tissues and they reach the photographic film and such organs and tissues which allow more of the intensities both medium and high intensity to pass through them will be depicted as grey on the photographic film of the x-ray. So what do we understand from this? 
high density tissues are depicted as bright areas on the x-rays and therefore on the CT scanner and low density tissues are depicted as grey or black and different shades of grey depending upon their density. So, having this basic idea what the scientists did was why not give some number to this various density of the tissues which is not exactly the density but give us an idea as to how dense the tissue is. So, let me give you an example for this. Here, this is called the region of interest. When it is placed in bone, you can see that the number it shows is about 1000, around 1261. Therefore, this number which was given to different tissues was called Hounsfield unit in order to honor Godfrey Hounsfield. So, you can see that bone has got a Hounsfield unit of greater than 1000. Here we can see the soft tissue of brain which is having a value around 53. So, soft tissues of the brain have a value, brain parenchyma have a value between 25 and 50. Here you can see that the ROI is placed in air and the number shown is minus 992. The Hounsfield unit of air is therefore around somewhere around minus 1000. Interestingly, this is an area of scalp fat and fat has got a value, Hounsfield units of 0 to minus 100 that is below 0. And this is CSF where you can see a value closer to 0. Since CSF is almost near water in density, it has got a value closer to 0 which is the Hounsfield unit of water. <music>